everybody, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well this afternoon. We don't have long before we end up going live here to cover the severe weather threat we have this evening. And there's been a lot of changes with that. So make sure you're smashing that like button and also leaving a comment. Also hit that share button if you would, because this could get pretty nasty over the next 48 hours. So a lot's changed here in the last 48 hours here. We now have two enhanced risks, one for tonight and one for tomorrow. Both of these are gonna be mainly centered towards the Midwest, where we have the greatest potential for severe weather being in the threat of hail, but we do have palpable wind and tornado threats with both days. We'll start talking about day one here, where we've pretty much been talking about Kansas City the entire time, but we do have areas off to the east and west that are within this hatch risk too, in particular. Inside this hatch risk, you could see potential for two inch hail or greater here. So definitely be on the lookout if you are within this region particularly. There's also this little sector over here towards Oklahoma City and Norman. That's a point of interest and actually has been big talk of the weather community. This area could potentially overperform, but it's very conditional. We would need a particular element to break here. It's called a capping inversion. And basically it acts just as the title says a capping inversion it basically has formed a cap in the atmosphere that would stop that warm unstable air from rising and getting those thunderstorms to really take off there's actually a saying usually the taller the thunderstorm the more powerful it tends to be it's not always the case but the stronger storms the bigger tornadoes usually form from storms that are at least 40,000 feet plus. You can get them at lower altitude, you can get the uh, cloud tops at lower altitudes to still be pretty significant, but more often than not, the higher the uh, echo tops, the better the storm is, or the stronger the storm is, because it might not be better for you if you hate storms. I don't personally, but yeah, anyway, enough rambling about that. Uh, we, here's our threat for tomorrow, and we have yet another enhanced risk. We have a very large hatched risk and there is the 30% threat for the hail. We're now stretching into St. Louis. We're now even getting into Springfield, Illinois here, and then Southeast Oklahoma, East Central Oklahoma, Northwest Arkansas, and even getting parts of Texas into the mix. We could even include Dallas. Originally, this was where the setup was gonna to be towards Dallas now. And I still think that there could actually be a very cheeky tornado threat over here because actually the setup is still really good for that. I saw some really impressive SIG tour numbers in yesterday's video. I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner here. And it still seems like that's gonna be the case here. One thing that I'm making note of in particular with these regions here, especially towards this red area where we have the 30% wind threat, is that these storms are eventually going to evolve into a line. And you even get to see a little bit of that over here on this screen to the top left corner, which is showing simulated radar throughout the next 48 hours here. But still, I, like I said, I'm going to be watching Southeast Oklahoma in particular. And then also I would watch this area between Missouri and Illinois in particular. I do think if those storms evolve, we could end up in a mode where we see a mixture of a line with embedded supercells. So could be a couple of points of interest in regards to the tornado threat there. So we'll be watching that tomorrow as we go live. All right, so starting to look at the thermos again, we already know about the moisture and the temperature situation here. Te widespread temperatures are gonna be towards the 60s and 70s towards this region. And that's gonna basically help set this up here which is cape convective available potential energy basically thunderstorm food basically the higher the cape values the more energy available for that thunderstorm to consume and usually when it has that kind of energy it ends up being explosive a lot of power so when you're starting to see these values above 2000 to 3000 joules per kilogram which is what we're going to be seeing pretty much throughout this entire run here the potential for storms is enormous. Of course, there are other parameters that come into play that kind of tell the story here. Like, for example, we were talking earlier about the capping inversion. There's a way for us to look at that here. It's through this, it's called convective inhibition. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically do the same thing that we did with the Cape map here. Basically, we're gonna look for those uh, brighter colors here and see what's going on here. 
So one thing that I'm making note of is there is a point where that cap kind of weakens a little bit right before sunset that could be a point of interest for Oklahoma. That time frame is very narrow, though, because watch what happens by the time we get later into the evening. Just after sunset, that cap builds right back in. Now, watch this as we head into tomorrow afternoon. This is us getting into the overnight. Cap's pretty strong over towards this region. All right. Still get that moisture to build in, get those surface temperatures to build as the sun goes up early in the day. And then look what happens. Look at how all of that inhibition clears up. So... There's not going to be much to really stop this storm setup. Really, the convective mode is going to be the key. If we get messy convection from these storms, which it doesn't look like we see from the uh, radar earlier, we end up having a multitude of thunderstorms and multiple thunderstorm modes as we head into the afternoon and into the evening. Now, of course, that front passes, the inhibition built back up and that pretty much will just symbolize the end of the severe event for your area once that front passes but as far as thursday setup is concerned it's not going to be too much to stop this one just the question still remains what will we get will we get significant tornadoes will we get tornadoes at all what kind of hail will we see how much hail reports will we end up seeing those kind of questions still remain, but I do think that we are at least going to get a few strong to severe thunderstorms for tomorrow set up at the very least. And like I said, even for Friday, I'm watching that closely as well. So that being said, we'll go ahead and actually take a look at a couple of different parameters here. Since hail is the main threat, I'm going to show one of the parameters I like to look at the most for that. Now, keep in mind, lapse rates kind of work a lot like how the significant tornado parameter works here significant tornado parameter is only effective whenever there's a thunderstorm over towards that region and pretty much the same goes for lapse rates here if we get a thunderstorm over an area with steep lapse rates and proper conditions you can end up getting some significant hail and we end up seeing that here towards this region as we discussed before we click this sounding here okay yeah we have a marginal tornado threat that's great and all but there's some indicators here on this map like this area right here are showing the lapse rates the steeper the lapse rates the greater the potential for hail typically tends to be ignore the fact that there's a cap here we're just really using this as an example and really that cap is more so towards the surface so it kind of inhibits tornadic activity but when you see lapse rates of eight that is really steep and it's reflected on this little parameter here in the yellow called ship that is the significant hail parameter so there's a chance over here towards this region which also is under hatcheris noted uh mind you that has a 1.8 to put in perspective for you the threshold for significant hail parameter being notable enough to put a hatch risk is one so not much more i really need to say there and then if we go through the day tomorrow we see some pretty steep lapse rates across the board here as well especially as we go throughout the day so like i said i think these next couple of days are obviously going to be big days for hail tornado threat lapse rates do matter when it comes to that especially with a stronger tornado threat but i think hail is probably going to steal the show at least at this time that's what i'm thinking because as we know, the forecast tends to change. Oops. We actually wanted to go to the significant tornado parameter there. So we'll go ahead and look at that Oklahoma City region. And what do you know? Right around that time that cap tries to build back in is where we get those highest parameters here. So like I said, it's very conditional. That cap can uh, stay broken for a little bit there. We could have something, I'm telling you. And I like the way this uh, hodograph curve looks for this setup here, especially towards the lower levels. There, it, See, there is inhibition here, but there's also really ample cape. Lapse rates are pretty impressive over here. Seven is still pretty steep. And then if I look at other parameters on here, moisture, temperature, like I said, it, it looks like a good setup here. And kinematically speaking, like I said before, setup looks really good across the board so like i said it's a conditional threat but if it gets going it could be a problem and then of course over towards kansas we have an area of interest here we're not going to have the same problems with inhibition here 
so with that and this is actually looking pretty ominous here this actually has a really good uh, low level profile here it's that mid level profile we'll have to watch and there's a little bit of veer back with this storm but nonetheless here I do think that we could see a couple of different areas with potential for strong tornadoes and then again same thing with that hail those lapse rates at 8 absolutely crazy and look at the reflection of that as a result especially with that weaker cap there significant pr parameter for hail at 2.5 so like i said you have to make sure that these areas even end up getting thunderstorms to be concerned about this but the fact that we got that over those areas it's definitely an eye opener to say the least and then of course as we go into tomorrow's setup it almost feels like a friday even though it's a thursday we can already see there's a couple areas that pop up here later in the evening around the time the storms develop where we get some decent numbers here now as we go later into the evening watch this area kind of pop up over here towards southeast oklahoma even towards eastern texas this has been a point of interest of mine from the jump when i first started seeing this on models so of course I'm going to be keeping an eye on this region in particular, especially if you end up forecasting. It's a different kind of bond. <laughs> Might I digress, though? If we go into the setup even for tomorrow, we'll take a sneak peek at that. We actually do have some values here. Nothing incredible, but there is that is symbolic of the sign that we had for the severe weather threat for Friday. So we're just going to keep an eye on that as well. Last thing we'll do here, of course, is get a look at the timing of these storms with this simulated radar. We already know the deal pretty much. As we get later into the evening is when these storms will fire right around the time of sunset for tonight. It's going to form an MCS that goes through the northern parts of Missouri, Iowa, and into Illinois. And we could see some severe weather remain even into the early morning hours for the region. But the main event, of course, is going to be into the early afternoon for this region. You can see this cluster of storms fire up here, and this is really what's going to end up uh, really setting things off. So we could have a couple of rounds here in particular towards north central Arkansas into central Missouri. And then here's that line that's going to end up forming on the front. We get our secondary cluster right here. We could see a mixture of supercells, multicellular storms here with potential for all three hazards possible. And then, of course, this condenses as a line and progresses off to the east. Where Friday, we will probably have to watch for that southern sector as we go into the afternoon. With that being said here, make sure you guys are staying weather aware. We're going to be live tonight. We're going to be live tomorrow. Hope you guys can join us. If you can, that would be awesome. If you could also smash that like button, leave a comment, and hit that share button. That would be awesome as well. I hope to see you guys very soon. I will have a video up in the morning, or at least that's what the plan will be. And we'll kind of go from there. Till then, it's been Tire Metalhead Weatherman. You guys take care and have an awesome rest of your day.